Yo, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Cooking in the house. Um, I I just left Paisano's. It's a a, a butcher shop here in uh, in Brooklyn. Oh, Smith Street. Paisano. Oh, wait, let's play the back. Paisano's. It's my birthday weekend. Tomorrow's my birthday. And I got myself a little birthday present. I want to see what it is. Hold on. Cowboy ribeye. Now, I've been wanting one of these ever since they became all the rage. This thing is going end to end on my camera. I, I can't even fit this whole thing on the, on, on the camera. This is freaking huge. First, I can bust somebody upside their head with this thing if I want to. This is, this is about to be an awesome cook. Happy birthday to me. Yes, yes, y'all. Yes, yes, y'all. Just got in from shopping. Super excited about my birthday weekend, which is such a holiday. Uh, I'm super excited about my birthday present from me to me. We're going to unwrap this in a little while, and then we're going to get cooking. Welcome to cooking. You guys ready for the big reveal? I'm ready. Check this out. Cowboy ribeye, dry aged, tomahawk steak, weighing in at a 2.59 pounds. <laughs> Happy birthday to me! Yay! Okay, we're gonna unpack this bad boy. These little labels are so tough. Not to cry. Check this out. This meat is dry aged. Check out all the fat, all the marbling inside there. And um, you can see a little bit of the darkness from the dry aging. It's a little bit different than just regular fresh beef. Um, and this is going to cook up really nicely. I hope so. Stay tuned. Since we're back from the butcher with this, they already cut and trimmed this thing up already pretty good. I don't have to do nothing with this except prepare it to cook. And the way I'm gonna cook today is uh, something that I don't usually do, but since this is a special kind of meat, I'm gonna use a special process, and this is um, called the reverse sear. Normally what I would do, let my meat sit out after it's been seasoned, let it get to room temperature, and then I'll drop it on a hot grill or drop it in a hot pan, sear it on the outside, and then wait till it gets up to a certain temperature, then I might just finish it in the oven if I'm cooking indoors, or I'll take it off the heat, put it on the indirect heat and let it come up to the temperature where it needs to be um, off of the coals or off of the gas, the direct heat. So this way, the reverse sear is works in reverse. So what we're gonna do is season this up, get it in the oven at a low temperature. So what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna be cooking it low and slow. We're gonna bring it up to a temperature that's underneath the desired temperature and then once I pull that out at a hundred and, I wanna go for about 135, 137 degrees on this for a good medium rare. I'm gonna take it out of the oven at about 121, 22 degrees hopefully. I'll try to get it around that area and then I'm gonna sear it off in a hot uh, cast iron pan to finish it up, get a nice sear on the outside, a nice crust on the outside and, um, and finish it off that way. That's the reverse sear method. So to make my preparation today, I'm going with the simplest of seasonings. I want to taste this dry aged ribeye. I want to get all the complex flavors of the dry aging. So I'm going to do something very simple. I don't like to throw the whole cabinet at it. As you know, I'm going to just take a half of a clove of garlic and rub over the surface of the meat. Flip it, use the other half. I'm gonna cut a little piece of this deco or this fat off. I'm gonna use this for something a little special. I'll round this off a little bit. I'm gonna cut this off and use that for something in a little bit. Probably a little bit of this fat can come off. 
from here, just a little trimming. Comes with a built-in handle. Isn't that cool? <laughs> yeah, that's all the trimming that we need to do to this. And then I just have some kosher salt. Liberally seasoning. This is easily two and a half inches thick. I'm going to liberally season this thing with kosher salt. Some of that's going to seep in. Inside, it's got to get down in the grain of the meat. Just make sure you rub that, pat it. Don't play no games with this thing. And some freshly ground black pepper. I, um, I just ground this pepper seconds ago so that the, the flavor is very fresh and the fragrance of the pepper is going to release itself into the meat. That little garlic rub is also going to give us a little hole right here. Let's try to get some stuff down in there so that'll penetrate a little bit further. You may not need to do anything else to this afterwards, but um, I said a simple preparation like this. I'm going to just put a little olive oil on top of it before I put it in the oven, and I'm going to get it, the oven to like about 225, and I'm going to go maybe 45 minutes. I'm going to stick a probe thermometer in there and um, get it to like uh, 122, 123 degrees before I take it out to do the sear. That's it. What's steak's best friend? Anybody know what steak's best friend is? It's potato. I just got a couple of large baked potatoes washed. Always wash your potatoes, especially somebody like me who enjoys the skin. Remember, potatoes grow in the dirt. So regardless of the processing that they do at the uh, farm or wherever they grow these and process them, you still want to wash them when you get home before you use them because they do grow in dirt. And then they're sitting in a bag somewhere on the shelf, who knows for how long, get musty in the bag. So wash it, scrub it a little bit. I enjoy eating the skin because that tastes really good to me. So I'll definitely make sure that I scrub my potatoes clean. So a little olive oil, a little dance, a little more olive oil, a little dance, and then just some salt on the outside. That's all you gotta do to a, for a baked potato. You stick this in a 425 degree oven until it's soft and um, until a knife goes through it soft and then it's done. Hey, it's me again. So remember that fat that I cut off from the edge of the ribeye and I said I was gonna use it to some, for something? I'm gonna put that into a really good use. I'm gonna use that fat to help me cook these mushrooms. Now, what goes better with steak than potatoes? A little bit of mushroom. I got some shiitakes here, and then these enoki mushrooms. I never tried these before, but they look interesting. I see them all the time, so I said, hey, why, why not just uh, give it a spin? So I'm gonna put some of the beef in the pan. Oops, in the pan. The fat, I'm gonna run it that down. And it's gonna give a nice, juicy, fatty flavor to the pan. And then when we uh, introduce the mushrooms to that, they're gonna pick that beef flavor up, some of that dry aged beef flavor, and it's gonna jump right up in there. It was our, our fat rendering down. I'm gonna toss some shiitakes in first. They're looking good. Hit them with a little salt. Ooh. 
Get it all freshly cracked. Then, I'm going to add another piece of this fat right here. Right here. And then I'm going to, uh, my angle And then I'm going to add the enoki. They look a little gentle, so I let the, I let the uh, shiitakes go for a while. And since these enokis, they look a little gentle, so I'm going um, to put them in now. I'm going to add them to this mushroom pile up now. And, um, see how they, how they work out. I don't want to break them up too much. Hit them with a little S. Hit them with a little P. And you know my friend Garlic is coming to the party. Garlic, where you at? Garlic is in the house. A little pat of butter. Just to round out the flavor. We got some more garlic here. I'm just gonna let these simmer for a while, toss them around, and then I can just put them to the side. So we got potatoes going, we got mushrooms chilling, we got the oven preheated to a comfortable 245 degrees. So now what we're gonna do is get our steak in there. I got May I remind you of my beautiful cowboy ribeye, my birthday ribeye. Uh, I've got my probe thermometer inserted, and we're gonna get this up to about 221, 222 degrees. We're gonna pull it out. We're gonna let it chill for a little while, and then we're gonna hit it with a hard, fast sear, and then it's gonna be time to eat. I will not open this oven. I will not open this oven. If you're looking, you're not cooking. 105 degrees. I would, I would really appreciate it if this steak would hurry up because I'm so hungry, it only take about 23 cents a day to feed me less than a cup of coffee a day to feed a David. Boom, 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 boom. So hungry. Okay, I'm sorry. I have to look. Oh my goodness. Look at this thing. Mm. All right, real quick. I just had a look real quick just to make sure everything was going okay. Make sure you're okay. You all right? You good? All right. See you in a bit. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We're in a home stretch. It's magic time. We've reached a temperature of 124 degrees. That picked up really quick. I was standing here at 121 122, 123 pass real quick. So we're at 124 right now. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna remove that ribeye from the oven. There we go. Oh, that's looking good. That's looking like something else. Okay, it's hot still. We'll take out our probe. We're gonna remove this from the oven real quick. Set it aside. And then, what we're gonna do now is prepare the hot pan. Look at how beautiful that is. That is 124 degrees inside. Look at how beautiful that looks on the outside. Ah, oh, man. Ah, oh, I cannot wait. Hey y'all, happy birthday to me. Wish me a happy birthday. We've got cowboy ribeye coming up. We've got this hot cast iron skillet going. You see that smoke coming off of that? We've got just the last few ingredients that we need here to get this done. 
I'm gonna put that over here because that's an ingredient. I'm gonna put that over here because that's an ingredient. This is the last stuff that we need to get this dinner popping. So, cast iron skillet is, is screaming hot. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil. Touch your fuss. I'm gonna put this garlic in here to get it started. I'm gonna put this rosemary in here to get it started, to get it fragrant. But we just want, we want, to, we want some fragrance in this pan for the final touch, the final searing of this cowboy rib. We're gonna throw some butter in there. It's gonna get hot real quick. Okay, here we go. Everybody to one side, watch out. Here comes the star of the show. Bam, you hear that sizzle? Cowboy ribeye is in the house. We're literally trying to sear this for like one minute because our temperature on the inside is really good, raised up a little bit in the rest. I'm gonna, I'm gonna apply some pressure to this because I want this part that's underneath the bone to really hit the pan and get seared. I'm counting y'all. Get this over here, watch this. This is over here doing this. We're gonna baste it a little bit. We got that flavor in there. Throw it on top, 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 throw it on top. Here we go. All right. It's been about a minute, I think. And we're gonna flip. Look at that reveal. Look at that flavor crust. That is awesome stuff right there. That is awesome stuff right there. We're gonna go for another minute on this side. I'm just gonna press this down this way. So the, this part here, the bone is preventing it from actually hitting the pan. So what I'm doing here is just pressing down on this and, and giving some pressure so that that's hitting the pan. I wanna make sure that it's cooked but I want to make sure every, everybody gets a little piece of that flavor crust. That sear that we've been waiting so long for. I'm going to drag it around here. Bring it to a hotter part of the pan. And then I'll move it here. Oops. I set off the smoke detector. It's too much flavor. Oh, there's too much flavor in here. I set off the smoke detector. Burn. It's too much flavor. Has it been a minute? Has it been a minute? I'm turning it off. I'm moving it. I set off the smoke detectors in the house. <laughs> so you know it was a hard and fast and hot sear. That was going on right here. I set off the smoke detectors upstairs. Whew, it's smoky in here. I'm sorry. But it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. For this guy right here, I'm going to remove it from the pan, let's go. I'm gonna bring it over to the cutting board right here. Then I'm just gonna let it sit there for a moment. But I told you, I wanted everything ready to rock and roll when we get out of here. So, I reheated my mushrooms and look how beautiful they look and juicy and delicious. My baked potatoes are here in the oven chilling. And then I'm ready to put some little a little bit of dressing on that. They're gonna hold me up for like five, 10 seconds. Just so I can put a little butter 
a little sour cream and a little chives on them because I don't want to be plain baked potatoes. And then I am going to sit down and eat my pre-birthday, birthday present dinner. From me to me. Stay tuned. That's it. Let's go for this reveal. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Coast to coast pink perfection. That is a perfect medium rare if I ever saw one myself. I'm going to enjoy the bleep out of this steak. This is my birthday present to me. Let's get another slice in there. Let's see this. Oh my goodness. It's cutting like butter, by the way. Oh, thanks to my brand new Morimoto knife. I'm stunting a little bit on y'all. I'm stunting on y'all a little bit. That's cutting like butter. When I tell you, worth every penny, worth every minute, worth it all from me to me. I deserve this. I deserve the good things. I deserve the finer things. So do you. Go out and get yourself a cowboy ribeye. Do what I did. Treat yourself. Mm. Mm. I don't know. Should I share with everybody else? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Some people say yeah. I don't know. Thank you for watching Cooklin. Happy birthday to me. Mm. I'm going to go eat the rest of this. I'll see y'all later.